All right, I think we're going. All right, just had to make sure. Um, this isn't gonna be too long, honestly. I uh, I don't got too much long in me. I just pause. I just kind of want to talk about what I see, man. That's all I can do. I don't want to make this too long. I just want to ramble a little bit. Uh, I guess I'll start the defense first. What is that noise? There's like somebody drilling us. Anyway, um, so the second half is the second half. I'm going to speak in overall sense. I'm going to speak about the second half of the first half. Overall, a lot of people are going to give a lot of flack for Ron Roberts, which they probably should. But I thought he called an overall solid. I, I'm struggling with solid. I don't want to say bad, but I'm struggling with solid. I, I'm somewhere between solid and bad because of the simple fact that you have effectively shook Carson Beck. The first half iteration of Carson Beck, and even into parts of the second half, was not completely just blown apart, you know, Jacob Fromm in the 2017 Auburn game. But he was clearly, like, not, I would say, reading the field, per se. I mean, almost on every third down in the second half, I guess it, it kind of helps that it was soft covers. You didn't really make it hard for him. But he's looking at one read, maybe two on some of those plays. But for the most part, one read plays. Again, I know it's soft coverage. It's particularly easy to throw against. And in the first half, it's just an entirely different story, really. I mean, you pretty much are playing press most of the way. I, As I understand, Jalen Simpson was out for pretty much the rest of the game. I think he got hurt. I don't remember when he got hurt, but after that point, I think he was out for the rest of the game. Um, I know Kaufman had suffered multiple injuries over the last few games. Um, and we had some other guys hurt then and there since uh, the beginning of the season. So I'm going to – preface that depth was definitely a problem in the defensive secondary and that hurts pretty much your most healthy unit was probably the linebackers because then you got um what's his name Mahmoud Kite I, I forget his name but you know what I'm talking about one of the interior pass rushers got hurt uh Marcus Harris was your best pass rusher to the point he but up until the point he got hurt he was incredible he got hurt as well so I mean you had a lot of depth issues and that's coming after the last game where you were just like going through it, you know? So I, I get it, right? Like, I get it. But it's tough, dude. You, you got to eat. It's tough, bro. It's tough. It's very tough. And I mean, I will say again, to his credit, the tackling, I mean, he can't help that, right? Like some of the Bowers tackling is what it looks like when you're playing starters a ton of minutes with no real rotation, no real substitutions going on in 85 degree temperatures in the middle of September. That's that's what happens. That's what that looks like. That's what a lack of depth looks like, is that poor tackling. The problem is that, again, the dude was open 10, 15, 20 years, 20 years, yard. He could run for years, honestly, how open he was, but yards down the field before you even get somebody that has a chance to tackle him. I mean, there's just some plays with the soft coverage that I just – I, I'd languish when I think about, I mean, I really do. I mean, it, it's tough to eat to the degree they ate in that first half of the press. And I know that in the second half, they got 10 points. Um, I'm trying to think of how those 10 points came about. The second half, second quarter, they got 10 points. I don't remember, um, honestly, to tell you the truth, I, that broke down. I know Dehan Blair, I think it's Dehan Edwards, my bad, Dehan Edwards, um, he got two touchdowns, the second of which was probably the most beat up. I thought defense looked all day. That was in the third quarter where they had tied it up off, off that run. The game made it 17-7. That was probably the roughest drive they had. They just got pretty much like beat up. And it was at the two-yard. That was the one where it got to the – it was a beautiful kick. The returner had muffed it. And then it kind of wound up, or he got it, recovered it, barely out of bounds at like their two-yard line. That was a 98-yard. They drove down the field pretty easily. I mean, there was a few third downs that they converted, I believe two of them. And I think one was to Bowers. One was to Bowers, and one was Beck had pressure in his face, and he had a crosser that was in his own coverage. Almost all of his coverage or all of his completions in the second half, especially in the third down, I believe, were against zone coverage. It was just tough, dude. I mean, it was either zone coverage or just soft press a lot or soft man a lot of the way. 
it's just it's such a tough way to lose a game, especially when like you pretty much didn't see them beat us over the top. I mean, I know Lad McConkey. That was what he did last time in the home game. I was there that home game. He was just frying the shit out of some more DBs. I think you need to at least see it once. Like, I mean, they don't have the Adonai Mitchell. Lad just came off an injury. They don't have the same speed upside that they had in 2021 or 2022. I think you just need to see it, right? I think you just need to see that. And there was also some catches that Bowers made were just fucking crazy on um, – Con- uh, what am I looking at? Conversion? Conversion type uh, situations. Like multiple one hand catches on the penultimate touchdown drive. But, or the actual ultimate. Wait, no. The one where he's making those one hand catches, I think that was on the last Edwards touchdown drive, I want to say. And then the 40 yard when it basically was a dagger. He went off on both of those drive lines. He just fucking eviscerators in both of those drives. So I think it's really where the game kind of begins and ends at. I thought the run defense was fine. Outside of Edwards getting going on the first touchdown drive he had, I don't remember that, like, all the – because it was, like, in the first half. But I thought there was a pretty healthy amount of run on that. And then there was some running on the last touchdown drive he had. That's kind of that. I think they had the run like stymied. Like they did a hell of a job. Um, they did a great job, I thought, of not overplaying uh, pass rush lanes. But they did a hell of a job uh, kind of going out wide. Because Georgia did a healthy amount of sweeps that went nowhere or only got two yards, maybe two or three yards, because of just the way our guys, I guess, kind of, you know, fanned out. Which is a, that's a negative connotation that phrase nowadays, but they fanned out wide and did a good job of playing contained. I thought um, our DBs really did a great job, especially early in the game of tackling. As the game kind of progressed, you know, their tackling on run stuffs were were fine, but the pass tackling was obviously uh, not exactly what we wanted. I thought I thought Larry Nitz did a decent job. I thought Asante did a good job too. Um, I don't remember much of Steiner, but I thought those two did a really good job as far as linebackers go. I thought it was a, a, I would say a probably a B minus B effort by the defense. I can't give it an A because of the simple fact that if you go out there and, you know, you give up, what was it, probably 25 of 32 from Carson Beck, maybe like 270 yards. You give up probably 150, 160. I think actually it's probably close to 200 to Bowers. I think actually, I want to say it's probably close to 200 for Bowers, which. That's not good, right? Like that's not that's not great. You know, that's not, it's not wonderful to give a turn to the one tight end who is a stellar receiving option, but again, a tight end and the day. Um, and the thing is, you played him with DBs that did such a fucking sim job in pass coverage. That's what just sucks. Like there were so many pass breakups in that first half that you just to lose like that is tough. I, we have to eventually get to the other side of the, the ball, but I, I really want to give these guys props. Like I know I came off sounding negative, but. They did such a hell of a job. So 23 or 33 for 313, uh, 9.5 YPC uh, or YPA, I guess. Uh, Bowers, 8 of 157. Uh, Rosemary Jack Saint had a pretty good catch, too, as I recall. At first, that point, I mean, you, you know, you, I mean, you did a decent job, right? You, you didn't play lockdown coverage, but you did enough to win that game for what felt like third quarters, uh, three quarters, and unfortunately, a fourth quarter. I don't think you did a good enough effort uh, whatsoever to win that game. And um, I guess we got to get to the point. We, we got to get to the offense. There's going to be some people that have very strong opinions one way or the other about this game. I don't I don't know what to say, man. I, I really don't. I, don't. I don't know what to say. They played a fantastic job about – making it easy for Thorne, which is what Free said he would do all week, try to make it easy for Thorne. Did he do it to a fault? I'll leave that to the discretion of the viewer. I can see either way. I I, I mean, I can see either perspective, really. I I really can. There were some times where I felt like you're committing to the run too much. There was was a, um, a fourth and a foot 
where they kicked it off. They didn't want to go for it. It was like about in their own 30 or 35. They kicked it off, and Jordan got a touchdown off of that. I get it, right? Like, I, I, there's, there's things to question. Philosophically speaking, I felt like it wasn't – it didn't feel like a game – that Auburn was interested in risking. Like, Auburn played that safe and still won. Or, uh, you know, won three quarters of football, give or take. I, I felt like eh, maybe two. They won maybe two quarters of football, roughly, against a, a far better team at every access. At every at access? What am I trying to say there? At every point. That team is more telling. You can literally look at the breakdown. There's a breakdown on, I believe, Auburn 247, I want to say. They like compares the two positions, uh, the two position groups, or the groups of fuck. What am I doing? This position groups between the two teams. Georgia is more talented, and literally like in the sense that they have the most talented player in every position group. And in some position groups, the offensive line, they are literally eleven players deeper in terms of talent than we were. So. You have pretty much two options when that's the situation presented ahead of you. You can just go balls to the wall, throw everything at the kitchen sink, throw everything, including the kitchen sink, and just go crazy. Or you can pretty much play defense first and basically try to assault the game away. And Auburn did the latter. And it, listen, if you get one or two plays differently, if you get one of those long touchdown drives from Georgia where three or four third down conversions fail, if you get the third down and one before the end of the half where they were basically in the red zone and elected to go for it and fourth to one and didn't get it, if you get one or two more plays, that's the the cops directing traffic. It's going to be a hell to get out of here, by the way. You might be able to watch this video right now while sitting in traffic except – the data in Auburn is fucking terrible downtown. Um, other than that, you, you'll be able to watch it. <laughs> you won't be able to watch this motherfucker for three years if you had to load it on the coverage that's in downtown right now. But, um, God, I mean, I can't even say you should have passed it more because the receivers fucking sucked. I, I don't mean to be rude to our players. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to count up, call out anybody. But Thorne threw some. Fucking gorgeous balls, paws that were dropped, dropped. Guys didn't get in position physically to at least make a play on the ball. I mean, even the last play where it wasn't a good ball by Thorne, the receiver fucking crumbled. Like he sat in position. It was a not good pass, but it was above him. I mean, it's one of you could jump up and get it, and he fucking crumbled. Malachi Starks played the ball better than uh, whoever the receiver was. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's just, it's tough because guys made such a fucking hubbub about our receivers, and they were fucking bad. I mean, I thought Fairweather did a good job of recovering from what was a pretty poor drop he had before the, the ultimate drive, the last drive. He had one drop that was fucking bad. I don't remember which one it was, but... I mean, Fairweather's like your only, like, semi-dependable option. So, I mean, I don't want to shit on Fairweather. But outside of him, dude, my receivers are fucking terrible. <laughs> there was one that, uh, I don't want to say his name out, because he got hurt in the play. He went and made a play for it. I commend Malcolm Johnson for the way he positioned his body, the way he pointed the ball. He did everything except bring the motherfucker down. And I don't want to shit on him because he got hurt on the play. But God damn, you got to make that goddamn catch, man. And that was the one that did not result in any points before half. Beautiful ball by Thorne. I'm not, I'm not dicking Thorne here. Pause. It's not even pause. I'm not dicking Thorne here. I thought he was fucking dreadful for multiple games this season. But that motherfucker came to play in this game. And these motherfuckers were dropping the easy-ass passes. Or do nothing to help him out. I don't know what you got to do, man. I don't know if you got to play the damn... I don't know what you got to do, man. I really don't. I, I don't I don't want to say that... Because I'm not a player. I don't know what you should do. I don't have any clue what players should do. But 
when you do get a good Thorne performance you got today, you can't go out there doing the fuck they did. You, I don't know what you got to do, but you can't do that. You can't. It just... Fuck me, dude. That that was that was just disappointing. The offensive line was fucking good. <laughs> they did good, man. They, they, the offensive line did good. Thorne had gotten rushed a couple times. I'm not saying he didn't. The run uh, blocking, especially on the outside, I think kind of broke down as the game progressed. I mean, there were still some good runs, but in the abundance that we had in the first half, not quite as much. But then again, Georgia adjusted. We weren't really – you know, throwing the ball very much in the first half, and we kind of had to a couple more times in the second half because of the, the game script. But you know, I mean, I thought they, I thought they adjusted, and Auburn did, had some runs, but they were not in as easy abundance as they were. I thought the play calling did a pretty good job. I felt like I'm still trying to make the run work. I thought some of the, the usages of Ashford in the second half were, were fine. Obviously, the drive people want to talk about the one we came in. Well, basically third and one. I think he came in on third and one. No, 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 no. He came in on first down. They got to third and one, and they stuck a thorn back in. People are going to get them shit for that, and they should because it doesn't logically make sense to take out Ashford on the obvious run down that everybody knew. Everybody's going to they're going to run on that because they ran on it before, and they were going to run it before or after. This was a game where they were going to run a lot, and and any advantageous position on the field they were going to run and they ran except with thorn who thorn is a guy that uses wheels well and i thought just about every capacity extended plays to get the ball off deep we're well, not deep but you know to open guys um he scrambled drew it well of designed runs he did well i mean he, he uses wheels well but ashford is a fucking different like running specimen than peyton thorn and these motherfuckers just had him jump over to the fucking... He, I've seen him do that. I've seen him in... I guess I think this very team just jump over the fucking line on third and one and just get a... I don't get why you make it that difficult. I know it looks like, hey, Robbie Ashford is in on third and one, telegraphs a run. But motherfucker, everybody was going to run anyway. <laughs> you weren't going to throw on third and one at the fucking Georgia 20-yard line. That wasn't going to happen. I mean... It just doesn't make sense. I would say at least you knew you were going to go for it on both plays. At the very least, fucking QB sneak it with Ashford on third and one, and then if he doesn't get it, then bring Thorne out and do something else. Or just quarterback sneak it twice. He's fucking like six foot four, like 250 fucking, I don't know. He's not like Cam Newton, but he's like fucking huge. And he's a big ass Ashley. I just, that, that one was overthinking it. And then if you get that, I mean, it's 17-10 coming into halftime. I'm not going to say you still with the fumble or anything like that coming out of halftime. If you get that touchdown, who knows what happens. But at the very least, even if Georgia score to come out of halftime, you pretty much tie the game up, you know. I think if Georgia score come out of halftime on that drive, you make it to 17-10, the game probably been effectively over, probably. Because when you have a time like that, like that where you can score before half, you fuck it up, and then they score up the half, usually that middle eight, uh, usually if you lose that, you're fucked. And Auburn didn't lose it because they got the, the fumble and they got the touchdown off of that, but that wasn't good. That, that was that was pretty piss poor in terms of, you know, in my opinion. Uh, special teams was was good. Uh, Sean Jackson on, I think, his second to last kickoff return. That motherfucker looked like he never got the ball ever in his life. I'm not saying he did bad. It's just that I, I've never seen somebody look like, whoa, where the fuck did this come from? But I thought he did good on that kickoff return. I really did. If he felt, if it looked like if he felt a little bit more like um, accustomed on kickoff returns, like he would have probably broke that for more than just 30, 40 yards. But again, listen, I played kickoff return coverage before. I played kickoff co- coverage and kickoff return. That's just a hard job, bro. That is probably the most underrated job in terms of potential damage to your ass that you'll ever see. Because when I play, you have, uh, you know, I don't know if this is even triple down to like the elementary levels, but you still have crackback blocks. So if you play kickback or kickoff coverage, you get your ass knocked off. Uh, and if you are, by some unfortunate stroke of luck, you're on kickoff return, you can get your ass killed out there. So I'm not shitting on anybody that plays off on either of those sides of the bowl. 
but you could just tell Sean Jackson didn't play too much kickoff return this season. Uh, he was more accustomed or more used to trying to protect the ball and just, you know, get to the ground safely. And even though he did make some things happen on that second last kickoff return, um, would have maybe liked seeing him, you know, maybe had a few more yards on that. But it is what it is. You know, he did have a good return, all they considered. Uh, Batty is just a weapon in every capacity. You got to use Batty however you can. Um, hopefully Austin comes back within the next couple of weeks so Batty can do even more returning. Because I kind of feel – I always feel bad about having, like, basically a starter caliber running back play both sides, both primary kickoff returner and running back. I always hate that. We did that with Carrion a little bit. We did that with a few guys um, throughout time. I always hate doing that, you know. Because they'd have a long return, which he'd had, and he came back in on first down. That was a pro- the running back. It's like this, I hate. All, I always hate doing that because you don't catch your breath, and you basically like whatever run you do on first down with that running back is gonna be a fucking waste of a, a play. Basically, he's gonna be tired as hell. Uh, but bad team looked incredible. I thought again. Um, yeah, I think one catch. Um, he moved well in space. I thought he reads lanes a lot better than Hunter did, which. That's the shittiest thing about Hunter this year is that Hunter has turned into Tank Bigsby. I remember last year people used to show Tank as Tank would try to read holes, and then Hunter would just cut up the field and just go. He was a good north and so- north and south running back, and now Hunter is Tank Bigsby. And I guess it goes to show you that should go show a lot of people because a lot of people, a lot of Auburn fans are always like meat riding the backup running back, um, especially in the last few years where like basically the running game has been. Very hit and miss. It's hard to be a starting running back on a team with a like not great chemistry, offensive line, um, offensive line, offensive line, offensive line, <laughs> offensive line. Like when you have the situation we've had since basically 2018, being a start, starting running back in that position, you feel like you have to make something happen. While the backup just comes in and says, "Hey, I'm just gonna kick some ass and go." And it's just hard, I think, sometimes to convey it to the starter, you know. But Hunter has been trying to do his kind of tank or carry on impression, be a more patient runner. And uh, he needs to stop it because it's not it's not working. It's not it's not working. I think Jarquez is a good running back, like a really good running back at times. Overall good running back, but over at, at moments, a really good running back. But reading the hole, trying to be patient, that's not him. He's not good at that. He's not good at all when he's, like, playing side to side. And uh, I thought he did a little bit too much of that in this game, although I still say he has a really had a really good rainbow roll. Let me pull the stats back up. Um, let me see here. It's taking forever to pull the stats up. Uh, we're going to scroll down. He's pinned as fucking me right now. Make him look an idiot on the, the feed here. Uh, we got to pull it up. All right, let's see. Auburn. So, Jerk was 19 to 59 for 3.1. I mean, against Georgia, you know, that's not, it's not bad. It's not great. It's not bad. Bad T's, YPC obviously looks a little bit better, but I would say if you take away the longest run, like his 18 for Hunter, 18 for 45, and then Bad T was 7 for 18. So Hunter had a better day. If you take away the longest run. However, Bat T was like, I mean, seven carries if you take away the longest run. I mean, it's not like a lot to derive a conclusion off of. Um, wish he had more runs than they did, like significantly more runs, which is believable. But when you think about Georgia, it's just crazy to think about. And Georgia was a passing team in this matchup. I don't think anybody would have thought that. Like, they just thought about the simple fact that, like, game script probably indicates that Georgia's going to run the ball down Auburn's throat and Auburn would have to, like, come from behind and pass. For the game script to be, basically, Georgia goes, not air raid, but airs the ball out while Auburn just kind of tries to run the clock out as much as possible. Um, let me see the, the, the play makeup here. It's fucking terrible. I hate, I hate the running clock shit. I hate it. Me and my grandma were talking about it. This, it sucks so much. Um, total plays. Let me see here. They had 100 more yards than we did. God, that sucks. Um, so, they had 33 play or 33 uh attempts and they had 30 rushing attempts they had 63 plays on offense and we had 63 plays on offense i read really that right yeah they had 33 and 30 we had 20 and 43 so we had exactly that and the time of possession standard is that same they had 2951 
we were 30, uh, 30 minutes and nine seconds. So Denver did the exact same time of possession. This was a very even game. Uh, we had a turnover. They had, a, they had a, two turnovers. And they had another one that didn't get called for a turnover. We had another one that was down as well. But it was a very, very equal game, I felt like. Like, I mean, the score would probably indicate that to you. Like, somebody had to win, somebody had to lose. Our third down efficiency was probably the biggest hole. I mean, we were literally facing, I think, at, at points. I think we were, like, seven yards to go for the first down on third down. And then we went at three. We went one of three on fourth down, which was not great, obviously. So, I think that's probably the biggest difference. You could, I mean, the biggest difference is either Brock Bowers being played with soft coverage or – us doing nothing on early downs and having to make miracles happen. You can choose either one you want to pick, but I thought overall I'd give the offense a play calling and play designing because the play designs I thought were pretty good. Sometimes the calling was not the best, but the designs I thought were pretty solid. I'd give the offense a A minus considering what we had to work with. I'd give the defense a B minus. Special teams probably a B plus. Something like that, maybe a B plus. Maybe an A minus too. Overall I'd say it's a B-plus day. If you have a team that got the shit kicked out of it by A&M, uh, damn near beat Georgia at home, who hasn't won or hasn't lost in now 666, God forgive me, days. Exactly, that's how many games they, so they lost, last lost a game. That is the amount of games or days. That many days to they last lost a game. That's fucking crazy to think about. They are almost like they're on pace – to break the like SEC longest winning streak ever. That's fucking crazy, dude. And Auburn outplayed them for I I'd I'd, con- I'd contend at least fifty percent of the game. At least. If not more. I mean I'd probably say more, but at least fifty percent of the game. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh that's a game that will probably feel a little bit better if you can turn it into something tangible down the stretch of the season. I mean you beat Number one down for at least half the game. You can't have that happen and then go get your ass kicked to LSU, uh, drop a, a shitty trap game against like Mississippi State or you know Vanderbilt. That's a real trap game. You had to take that game and turn this into like seven and five, eight and four. You got to. You got to do that. You cannot have that game happen and then you know basically between twelve LSU it where you damn near beat a top five team and then you go out and lose every other fucking game for the rest of the season. You can't do that, and hopefully they don't do that. I trust Freeze, I'd say about 80% of the way. I wouldn't say 100% of the way, but about 80% of the way I trust Freeze. I think he'll make some uh, some strides here. And Thor, if Thor looks like that you know, around um, other venues like Louisiana, or we we got to go to one of the Mississippi teams. I don't know which one. We got to go to one of the Mississippi teams on the road. Uh, if you look at that against those teams, you're probably going to be cooking this with some grease. Some grace. Anyway, I'm I'm done. I'm done. I've had enough. 28 minutes. We're just going to like, I'm going to make sure the audio sounds decent. We should go ahead and post this. War Eagle, I suppose.